This iconic castle dominates the Syrian plains, facing what's called the Oms Gap, a historic pass connecting the mountains of Lebanon and the Mediterranean coast. It was built more than 1,000 years ago, and its extraordinary size, location, and unique shape made it a key element of the Crusades. For more than a century, the Hospitaliers, who controlled the land, transformed it into a massive construction site and made it impregnable. But the legendary story began with a terrible disaster. In 1170, there was a huge earthquake which changed everything. It was documented. It was one of the strongest earthquakes of the Middle Ages in the Middle East, and it probably destroyed almost everything. After this big earthquake, the, the order decided that they want to do something brand new. They built a polygonal castle, flanked by towers. And other buildings were constructed all around the inner courtyard, where the Hospitalier brothers lived. The crack is built on the slopes of the mountain. To the north, from east to west, it is protected by the steep terrain. To the south, the mountain is slightly higher than it, so the Hospitaliers placed three rectangular towers to improve its defense. This new barracks castle met all the needs of the soldier monks. When the orders built these large fortresses, they were designed for soldiers, religious people, and civilians to cohabitate. So that was obviously a huge change. Would it be enough to protect it from potential attackers? At the beginning of the 13th century, the situation was increasingly tense. Europe started to lose its interest in the Crusades, and uh, less and less help was to be expected from Europe. So the local Franks living here since like three or four generations had to rely on fortifications. To uh, compensate for their lack of manpower, they had to build more uh, uh, strong and more fortified castles. We can say that they were substituting the personals with rock. They needed to be able to withstand more powerful armies with more powerful weapons and more soldiers that were able to attack on all flanks at once. In addition, a new weapon had just made its appearance on the scene, the counterweight trebuchet. It was a kind of catapult that used a counterweight to send cannonballs weighing more than 100 kilograms over distances greater than 200 meters more accurately than ever before. If you uh, were not changing the size of the ball, you could always hit exactly the same position which you hit before. And uh, you could have a much better aiming, you could plan your bombing strategy more effective, and you can make more precise and continuous destruction on the same point. These were much more devastating for castles. There is a revolution in offensive technology, shall we say. And after that, only very sophisticated and, and well-developed castles can survive that sort of attack. The Hospitaliers were determined to strengthen their fortress to respond to these new forms of attack. To succeed, they had to completely rethink the Crac de Chevalier. They enclosed the 12th century castle with a much bigger 13th century castle. So the 12th century fortress was still there. They didn't demolish it. They just built an outer skin, so to speak, an outer layer of defense to surround it. The interior castle got a coating, a new coat from the south and from the west in the form of a huge a sloping wall. The Crusaders built the new wall to form a glacis. In other words, a sloping wall. This significantly improved their defense. The glacis is simply a mattress. A glacis is simply a mattress of stones built on rock. The rock is regularized in such a way that it makes climbing it extremely difficult. Then a ditch is dug in front of the wall to make it even taller. It's, it's absolutely extraordinary. The glacis also helped to protect against sapping, which was very common at the time. If you are having a huge talus supporting your tower and your wall, it's, it's practically impossible to undermine because you cannot make a hole big enough 
to, to collect all this quantity of material. This glacis was also used to support gigantic semicircular towers more than 15 meters high. The Crusaders placed them directly on top of the old towers, which served as a foundation. Most castle towers were rectangular because they were easier to build. Why did they choose such a difficult shape? Rounded towers are kind of a new option, though. And you often see them with smooth masonry, so really to accentuate the curve of the tower. But this is something new. And rounded towers were uh, just much better withstanding the projectiles because the rounded forms, uh, they could uh, divert and not eat directly. The glacis and semicircular towers made the wall impregnable. The Crusaders knew it, so they used them on the most vulnerable sides, including the one facing the plateau, which was easier to attack. The final result was impressive and unique in the Middle East. The glacis on the north face wasn't built as carefully as the large glacis on the attack face. So it was really there primarily to impress attackers. So those stones were cut in a way that the tower just rises out of the glacis with no seams. Um, that in itself would have involved some pretty fantastic um, architecture and masonry. It's quite exceptional, and what it demonstrates is a new kind of expertise, a new way of approaching the design of fortresses. With its half-round towers and glacis, the crack became famous throughout the East and earned a reputation as being impenetrable, especially since the Hospitaliers had a surprise in store should a potential attacker ever reach the walls. The glacis is not just a lump of stone. It's actually hollow inside. I mean, there are passages, there are arrow slits, and so on. They built galleries with arrow slits in them, so the arches could shoot outwards from them. Inside the glacis, two-meter-wide galleries along the entire length allowed archers to attack anyone who tried to climb or undermine the wall. The Hospitaliers created an impressive second line of defense, which followed the terrain and surrounded the inner castle. The outer line of wall was also uh, supplied with these half-rounded uh, towers uh, to make it more effective against the, the attack, and that's what makes uh, the Prague de Chevrolet one of the most impressive concentric castles of the age. The strategic importance of this is that if that outer castle is captured, those in the interior castle still have an opportunity to basically negotiate a surrender. Everything was designed to keep attackers from getting in, even the angled entrance, which was pushed to the extreme so that anyone coming through the door would have to turn 180 degrees and walk along a long sloping corridor dotted with arrow slits and holes through which the occupants could throw stones. It's all of those elements kind of being brought together. And so you can see a culmination of certain advancements made in certain places all being brought together to try and put them to greatest effect. Safe inside the walls, the Hospitaliers built a large room 28 meters long. They added a chapel and ambulatory and kitchens. In the 13th century, more than 3,000 people lived inside these walls. Therefore, the monks had to get creative when it came to water management. Azem Anna and his team have unearthed a unique, extremely complex and sophisticated water distribution network never before seen in a fortress. It allowed the Crac de Chevalier to be completely autonomous in terms of water. We started in 2017, we made our excavation and uh, we were very uh, surprised uh, because we discovered a lot of uh, unknown canals before. So we, we can, we can uh, recognize three uh, types of system let's say, or three types of water according to its use. White water, gray water, and black water or, or sewage uh, water. The source was white water. The Hospitaliers developed a formidable rainwater collection system. Numerous cisterns were installed throughout the castle to store the water. The biggest was found in the kitchen. 
the most problem for them, as uh, I think at that time, that they have to prepare uh, food every day for 3,000 uh, persons. They need a lot of water. They need a lot of water to cook, uh, to clean the dishes, to drink also. So inside the kitchen, we have the biggest system for drinking water or white water in, in, in the crack. They can store there about uh, 600 cubic meters of water. So it's a huge quantity. Once the water was used, it entered the gray water system, where it would serve a second purpose. There was a system of latrines. There were a few around the castle, but in particular, there was one place with 12 latrines together, and another tower containing 12 more latrines. And then, then uh, it's uh, become uh, dirty water, which we call black water. This one should be uh, directly uh, through outside uh, the citadel. The Crac des Chevaliers dominated the valley. No Muslim army dared to attack it. But meanwhile in Europe, a new crusade was brewing. <laughs> 